which team, AFC team, in your mind, has the best chance of winning in Baltimore in the playoffs? Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I don't hate that. Look, Cleveland Browns. This, the crazy thing is, because I'm like, oh, man, they are. I am going to get laughed out of here when I say the Cleveland Browns and RC and I, but we think the same way. We think the same way because we've been part of defenses that all of a sudden can suffocate you. Yep. And, and if you look at it, look, we know Cleveland already beat him one time with, by the way, an unbelievable performance by Deshaun it Watson was. in yep. the second half. Yeah. But um, their defense, it, it, they might not be as good as Baltimore's, but they're close. They actually lead the NFL in, in total yardage. Yep. So their defense can hang with Baltimore's defense. So that they're going to have a, a chance. And I think the only way that Baltimore doesn't win the whole thing. They play bad. They play <laughs> bad, and they turn the football no over. No one's beaten Baltimore this year. But no. Baltimore's so, so, beaten but Baltimore. themselves. So, right, yeah. yeah. So, so here is why I say Cleveland. And, and, and it hasn't shown up recently, right, in the last few weeks. The only place Lamar Jackson has been susceptible the whole year yeah. is in the pocket. Yeah. That's it. That's when we've seen them turn it over because they have guys that can get to Lamar Jackson starting with Miles Garrett. Ooh. Now, from what we've seen from Lamar in the last few weeks, we're just picking teams because we feel like having fun. Yeah. Right. right? Because with the way yeah. that we gotta they, pick something. Yeah, right. with the way that they're playing, it don't matter if the Cleveland Browns come with Joe Flacco, Joe Namit, Joe Montana. Jim Brown. Right? They're gonna get it. <laughs> but when you watch this team play and to have a quarterback like Joe Flacco who's playing without fear and with pure joy, right? Joe Flacco is like, hey, man, if I throw this ball 60 yards and they pick it off, I don't care because cool. I'm going to throw the next one 60 yards yeah. too. And I know Kevin Stefanski is going to put me in some position to have some layups, to have some easy throws. I just have to make them. And you think about being able to run the ball, being able to play defense, and having an experienced quarterback that's at least seen everything and also seen it yeah. when he'll have to see the Baltimore Ravens, which is in the playoffs. That's why I like this team from a complete team standpoint. What if they came with Joe Dirt? Joe Dirt, they still not have a chance, <laughs> but he does have a fire mohawk. Okay. So uh, they both go with the Browns. Who, who, who you so I, I, do, I do think the Browns stand a chance because a, a lot of the things that they said also, Lamar, if you blitz him, he's not great against the blitz, even though he's the MVP of the NFL this year. We should probably say that Lamar, the MVP, it's done. Lamar Jackson is going to win his second MVP by the age of 26. First guy to ever do that. People still say he sucks. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, he struggles with that a little bit. Cleveland's great at it. And also, they can get you to third and long. Cleveland's great at it defensively. I also think Buffalo still. And mm. part of it is because I've felt that way about Buffalo. I, I still think that they're very good when it comes to getting after the quarterback and their pressure package. Their third down pressure package is very good. I just have seen over the years that it's going to be so hard to go to Baltimore and beat this team without a freakazoid quarterback performance. Like, it's going to take a total team performance, no doubt, and you're going to have to slow Baltimore's offense down. Your defense is going to have to play good. But you are going to – like, it, when to go beat Patrick Mahomes on the road, it was going to take a remarkable quarterback performance. We've seen that out of Josh Allen. To go beat a Joe Burrow on the road, it was going to take a remarkable quarterback performance. I don't know if Joe has that remarkable performance in him in the playoffs. That's a good point. You know? That's a good point. And I think because of the way that Buffalo can play defense and the blitz packages that they can to play on, on de their defensive side. And now Josh, I thought Josh was the one guy that could go take the MVP from Lamar. Yeah. If he played really good over the past two weeks. He hasn't. He didn't play good yesterday. But I know he's great. So and, I, and that's going to be needed to I have another question for you there. there. Yeah. Right? How much does, from an offensive standpoint, being a quarterback, also being a coordinator, head coach, play caller, does seeing a defense over and over help you, right? Because nobody is going to have seen the Baltimore Ravens as much as Kevin Stefanski and the Cleveland Browns mm, have right. if we get into a playoff scenario where, where some of those exotic blitzes or, or simulated pressures or the, 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 the drop eight coverages, they aren't new to Kevin Stefanski and figuring out ways to dial up things and scheme them. Yeah, and that's huge. I mean, it's almost like when you're in training camp and after, like, the first week yeah. or two, every quarterback starts to light up the defense because we stand there like, we know what you guys are doing. Yeah. So having to see it consistently is a massive advantage for mm -hmm. the team. I, I think for, like, the defense. Like, you would say advantage Cleveland defensively, I think, just because of seeing so much. But then you would also say advantage 
Baltimore gotcha. defensively because they've seen so much of the play actions gotcha. and the boots. The, the interesting thing is, like, both these teams would be very different than the version that played against each other in the regular season. Mm -hmm. Like, Cleveland would be playing with Joe. Yeah. Cleveland would be, we'd be playing without their tackles. You know, Baltimore would be, would, would be playing, I guess, pretty true to who they are outside of Keaton Mitchell, you mm -hmm. know? So, um, I, I just don't see anybody – because the three losses Baltimore has this year – Pittsburgh, they beat themselves with the drops. Indy, they beat themselves with fumbles and the weather. And then Deshaun's comeback. Yeah. So you're going to have to go beat them. And, mm -hmm. and no one has this here. And I don't know, like, as much as I do think Cleveland is dangerous, if I had to pick the quarterback that I think is most capable of having a – He's on a wave. You wonder when it's going to come crashing sure. down. And, and, just like and he guys, turns it over. Gotcha. And I've right. seen Josh Allen go on the road in the playoffs and play Superman ball. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. But – their defense can't hang. They can blitz Who's? the quarterback. Buffaloes. You don't think? No, no way. And here's why. Uh, you, you mentioned it already. You got to blitz Lamar Jackson. All right. He's like 20, 24th, I think, in the league yeah. when you blitz him. All right. He's fourth in the league when you don't. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. And he's the number one outside the pocket quarterback in the league. Sure. So to me, that's how you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to rush five to get him. Cleveland is one of the only teams that can match these receivers one on one. Mm. But here's and that's here's, why uh, Buffalo can't. But there's no way. But here's the thing where I would push back on a little bit with that is Lamar is the last quarterback in the league I want to play man on. Yeah. Like because here's my thing. Now he's scrambling. Night night through. Irene. So it, you know I think Buffalo because. A lot of their pressures are a little bit more zone-centric pressures or fire zones or simulated pressures. It bodes a little bit more. I, again, I don't yeah. – we're trying to find teams that well, we don't have a ton of confidence and, and going it's, there. Man, and, and I just – you know, like man and, and fire zone, very similar. Yep. Yeah. Okay. When you look at this team from a defensive standpoint, this is a team that could be in any football game with the yeah. way that Steve Spagnola and that unit – are operating. I just don't think they have it offensively. Let's look again last night. MVS on a short crosser has an opportunity to catch a football, which would be a catch and run for a touchdown. It's dropped. We also get Patrick Mahomes in a backup situation. What they always say, watch the hard count, deep shot. MVS gets a deep shot, and Patrick Mahomes misses him, and he misses him bad, which isn't something that you're used to seeing. We don't get an attempt to Travis Kelsey until late in the second quarter. I still think that this team hasn't found enough offensively to compete with the Baltimore Ravens, to compete with the Cleveland Browns who are going to play defense at a high level. And to me, even a team like the Buffalo Bills has an ability to be much more explosive than the Patrick Mahomes-led Kansas City Chiefs can be. Is this a team you want to play? Hell no, right? Because they got the best player in the world at the quarterback position. But even he, in this moment, is not playing at an elite level. Patrick Mahomes doesn't look comfortable playing behind those offensive tackles. And what you're telling me is when they play the Baltimore Ravens, when they play the Cleveland Browns, you're going to go out and block Justin Matabike. You're going to go out and block Miles Garrett. If Kyle Hamilton is healthy, you're going to find a way to protect him when those blitz packages of Mike McDonald are coming at Patrick Mahomes. Do I believe that this is the team that gets its doors blown off against anybody? No, because no, I believe that defense can keep them in the game. I believe they have a quarterback who will always scare you. But offensively, I just don't feel like they have the pieces to compete with the elite of the elite of this conference. I think they could go on a Super Bowl run if they play the way that they did yesterday. You know, what, what about yesterday? Because you keep saying that. Yeah. What about yesterday makes you think that, Dave? Well, I could, uh, yesterday was the first game, and I feel – maybe two months that they didn't beat themselves. Okay. Like, they just didn't – you didn't see these egregious penalties. You didn't see the yeah. egregious drops. There were some close misses that one to MVS you're yeah. talking, the Justin Watson one on the deep yeah. crosser. I think Travis had a drop. but On his I, fingertips. Yeah, really yeah, okay. right. So, I think the things that I liked about their offense is – Pacheco, they, they, they didn't hurt themselves with some of the run game stuff. Remember, we did that tape on NFL Live this yep. past week of Travis said, you know, every guy's taking a turn kind of blowing their assignment. Yep. That didn't show up yesterday. It was almost like every guy took an opportunity to go make a player something. You're right. So I liked that. Um, Rasheed Rice, for a couple weeks we said, like, hey, that's got to be the focal point of mm -hmm. the past game. We saw him take another step forward. He's becoming a very – dynamic and reliable wide receiver. So offensively, I sat and I said, 
if they were a little bit better on third down, this game's a blowout, and they win by three touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Now, they got to be better on third down. There's no question. But some of those third downs are so close. I think they had a drop button in another situation. So, um, I just sit here and I go, that was the first game that I watched finally. You go down 17-7, and I'm like, ooh. And all I kept saying was, here come the Chiefs. Here come the Chiefs. And it felt like a little bit – I don't want to say vintage Patrick Mahomes offense because yeah. it wasn't the explosive plays – but it did feel methodical like last year. To your point, I think the defense keeps them in every game. Yeah. If they can build off yesterday, I, I think that they're they're talented enough. That's what I've kept saying, Cassidy. Is like, there's some teams where I sit there and go, "Listen, you're not good enough. You're just you're not. They're they're talented enough individually. And I think if they get out of their own way finally for the first time, like they did yesterday." They can go on a run. I believe that. I, I just wonder if, like, drop passes have something to do with talent or is it kind of like the yips or some, some sort with this team? Like, uh, well, when I, it comes to, like, the receivers, are they the reason this team won't make it to the Super Bowl solely? I, I still think if they don't make it, it'll be because of the tackles. That's what I think it is. Yeah. I, I, I don't – I've never seen a team – you've been around the NFL for 30 years probably I've been yep. around – I don't, I don't, I've never seen a team not make it because of drops. Yep. At some point, drops are almost right. like these things. These guys are pros. Now, it necessarily hasn't cured itself in Kansas City, which, again, is shocking. But I still think it's the tackles. We have seen teams be very good, but offensive yep. line and not win it. Yep. And I think when you look at their tackles, it's affected their quarterback so oh. much. The, the drops, to me, have affected Patrick Mahomes less than the pressure. I agree. Right? The pressure has now gotten to a point, especially you look at yesterday, once Trey Hendrickson is able to get that strip sack, now we're seeing Patrick start to move around. Run around a little Think bit. about late in the game, uh, third and three. Yeah. Patrick runs the football. He tries to stick it over the over the uh, fourth and first, one. first goal, first yep. down mark. He doesn't, he doesn't throw the football. You have the fourth and one. It seems like he has a guy to the flat, yep. but he's gotten in his mind now, use my legs, use my legs, create, create, create. He gets the fourth and one with his legs. And so I feel like Patrick Mahomes has lost a little bit of faith in his protection, which oh. was, which used to be. Part of his superpower is that I will wait and I will hold it and I will make a play because I know they'll give me an extra second. He doesn't have that anymore. And you talked about with the Eagles, it's hard to be consistently good. So yeah. do you feel like the mindset between these two teams mirror each other? Or is it? I think, the, I think the mindsets are different. I think one team has been good way longer. Right. With, with a certain group of people. Mm -hmm. We've seen the candidate. I think that Patrick Mahomes – and no, I don't think Jalen Hurts thinks differently, but I think that Patrick Mahomes and that entire building believe, you know what, this could change in a week. And in a week, we could be something See, different. That's, I agree yeah, with that. Like the, I, think, I think they feel like we've done it so long, it's just this, it's just that, and we can get it. I think the Philadelphia Eagles thing is so much different because there's so much change, whether it be to the roster, to the coaching staff, or even their position and the way the games are falling. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more to question. And one team has a great unit still. Like Kansas City's unit yeah, you're right about is that. still a great unit. Yeah. Philadelphia doesn't – either side doesn't have a great unit. It's, it's, it's like – it's really interesting to pay attention to Kansas City because to RC's point – Patrick all year has said, we just got to get it. Like, we just got to keep getting better. We just got to keep getting better. We just got to keep getting better. We'll get it fixed. We'll get it fixed. I'm going to keep trusting those guys. And it hasn't. And you've seen moments where he doesn't trust them. And then you're starting to see moments where he does, at least the Rushi Rice. I think their tight ends can be yeah. viable pieces. And then Travis last week and the week before is like, we just got to stop beating ourselves. One at, you know, every guy kind of rotates. And so when – at least in my experience, when players say that, they say it because they believe it. Like, they say it because they sit there and they watch the tape and they, like, they know that they're capable of more and that they're close. And it's all self-inflicted stuff. Right. And champions control that.